Hello and welcome back to the workshop. Welcome to August. I hope you had a fantastic July. I hope you're gonna have a fantastic August. And this is a great way to start August because we're gonna be making our first Damascus steel project in this workshop. The first big project here in the new workshop. We're gonna be making a Damascus steel Viking battle axe. Thank you for joining me. So first things first, of course, I've got to make myself up an enormous stack of Damascus steel as ever. I'm using 1080 for my dark steel, 15 and 20 for the light steel. We're gonna stack them up, throw it in the forge, forge weld it together, start manipulating the pattern to get something interesting for this axe. I was literally just about to film the shot of me putting the piece of steel in the fire because the fire was roaring away, but I noticed the pressure was dropping on the forge. Yeah, that's right. First project I try and undertake, I misplan. I don't have any propane, so it's time to go get some propane. What you up to, Sam? I'm making a sandwich. Sandwich? Sandwich. We've got very little in the way of food, so, and the, the butter's still hard, so I've made sausages in a sandwich. Do you know how terrible that looks? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, having said that, you made one for me though, right? Thank you, Sam. Gas acquired. I'm now gonna go and get a stapler so that we can start putting flags up on that back wall in the workshop. You guys, I don't notice the echo is now like almost non-existent in the workshop. It's it's really good. The reason is, is we now have the rock wall in and we have uh, drop cloths over the rock wall. I'm gonna get a stapler so that Sam this afternoon can start stapling up flags. <laughs> Just like that, the forge is back up and running, and it's gonna take a little while for that to heat up. Once it is, we're gonna start making some Damascus again. This is, uh, I hate to say, this is a little bit of a foreboding start to the big project in the new workshop. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we get back on schedule pretty soon here. As I let this cool down, I'm gonna pass it through the forge so that it all cools down nice and slowly. This is gonna give me a, a nice soft piece of steel to work with, so when I go in the bandsaw, it means that it cuts nice and easily, as well as I can grind it easily, because of course, I grind it so that I can restack it, making sure the pattern is how I want it to be when I do the next forge weld, and also so that I can clean those surfaces with a grinder. Boy, does it feel good to have that hammer running and, spur and be able to throw some sparks. Sam is just finished up. Look what he has done. He has made this wall a piece of art. How are you doing, Sam? It's warm up there. It gets really, really hot. Good day. Isn't it beautiful? Big, big thank you to those of you guys that sent these flags in. 
This is, uh, this is, oh, okay, there's one Tennessee flag. We were sent three Tennessee flags. Tennesseans seem to be like the most giving people there are because we got three of your flags. So big thank you to Tennessee. Big up Tennessee. But of course, thank you all. <laughs> In one of Rango Star's most recent videos, I got the piece of steel in the fire there, it's heating up, we're about to hammer it, flex it, forge weld it, but in one of Rango Star's most recent videos, he gave me another mention, which is awesome, and I still squeal like a little girl of excitement, because Rango Star gave me a mention, and that's just crazy. Uh, reason being, he talked about respirators. Now, I'm really excited, because the reason he mentioned me is because he saw me using a respirator and got himself a respirator, and then told all his followers to go get respirators and wear respirators, which is super good, because it took me a while to start wearing a respirator and I strongly regret the fact that I started doing stuff like this without wearing a respirator whenever I was grinding and whenever I was welding. Now, as best as possible, uh, unless I'm being silly, which is still too much, more than I'd like, I wear a respirator. Now, what he was talking about, as well as talking about respirators, was the storage of his respirators. And he talked about how he liked to keep it in a box and he liked to keep the filters in the same box and keep it nicely tucked away like that. Now, Cody, I hate to, uh, hate to jump in here and, uh, and, and I, I disagree, but I disagree, and I'm gonna try and present an argument as to why it is that you don't want it in a box. And I know that that's bad. I know that, you know, they would, they would say, you know, uh, okay, keep your respirator in a bag, keep it clean, keep it free of the working environment. Well, I'm gonna say that it's, uh, it's one of those things where there's a, there's a cost benefit that you gotta work out, and the cost of keeping that thing perfectly clean and tucked away and neat and tidy is that you're gonna be less incentivized to get it for the quick two minute job that requires that you have the respirator. So the argument I would make, and what I do with my respirator, is I keep it hung up somewhere clean, but easy accessible. Or I keep it face down somewhere clean, but easily accessible. Because there are times where I'm gonna do two minutes of grinding like I just did, and I wanna be able to put that respirator on my face without having to go into a box, deal with the filters falling out of the box, deal with having to neatly stuff it back into the box after the fact. I want the thing at hand, okay? It might be a little bit dirty. I might get dirty stuff on my face. I might end up breathing in a tiny amount of the dust that I was trying to protect myself from, but that's ultimately better than a quarter of the time that you do a two minute job, you don't put the respirator on at all. So I would argue that keep that thing at hand. Keep it clean, but keep it at hand so that you can quickly put it on and you don't have to deal with opening up a box, going to the special part of the workshop where it's kept to put it on. Now. Let's add the caveat, I'm a very unorganized person. I really don't like being organized. I, I, it's a battle that I struggle with every single day to stay organized. Is this me creating an ex post facto justification for my lack of organization? Maybe. I still think it's reasonable. Keep the thing at hand, keep it close so that we can put the respirator on as much throughout the day. Because honestly, anytime I'm making dust, anytime I'm welding, anytime I'm grinding, anytime I'm doing anything like that, I should be putting it on. If I'm not, I'm being silly. Feel free to you guys to call me out on that whenever you see me doing it and I'm being silly when I'm not putting it on, so why not have it at a hand so I can uh, quickly put it on and uh, help, the old, uh, help the old oxygen breathers stay healthy as long as possible. Let me know what you guys think. Love to hear what you think, Cody, too. <laughs> Thank you.
Okay, Dougley, let me run you through what I'm experimenting with today. So the first thing I did is I had my steel slabs like this running down the piece. I then rounded that and hammered from this direction here. That created a rectangle where I cupped the pattern over like this. I then stacked that up six. I then stacked that up six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that meant when I crushed it down, I had something that looks like that within the steel. Now, I want to play around. The whole idea with all of this is playing around and learning and seeing what happens to the material as I move it. So I want to see if I can do what I did to achieve this to this pattern. And I want to see how that turns out. So what you just saw me do is you saw me just like back there, where it's now smudged out, just like here, where I rounded off the initial flat layers, I rounded off this material, and then in this cross section, I marked out a flat, and the next step is gonna be to continue to flatten that down into another flat piece. That's then gonna get cooled down, we're gonna grind it, cut it up, restack it, and I'm really interested to see what happens to the pattern where I make W's out of W's. I'm interested, we'll see. I have no idea how this is gonna turn out. I don't know how most things are gonna turn out, but most of the time it's just a whole lot of fun to try. for today not to become another day that finishes at midnight, I'm gonna wrap it up there. Tomorrow we're gonna continue with the pattern development and we will have finished forging this axe. It's gonna be a very exciting day tomorrow. I look forward to seeing you then. In the meantime, big thanks to Sam. He put the, put the, he put the flags up. Flags are looking beautiful on the back wall. Thank you to you guys. Those of you that sent those flags, I sincerely appreciate it. It's a really colorful workshop and it means a lot to know that they're fan flags. So thanks guys. Many, many thanks. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow on the next episode. Like I said, we're gonna be continuing on, continuing on with this Viking battle axe. If you're new here and you don't know what it is that I do, I make a video as close as I can to every single day. We got great things happening here in the future. Great, fun, exciting projects coming up and I can't wait to bring you along with it. If you're watching in the future, be sure to watch part two of making this battle axe. Otherwise, there are two videos right here that you guys can check out. And if you're new, be sure to subscribe right there. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.